Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a sweet unboxing episode today. A lot of high-end guitars and a sponsor to talk about, but let's go ahead and start with the most interesting story of this batch. I traded for this guitar with a good collector friend of mine. My first sale to him was probably back in 2017. Like he's one of the earliest customers that I remember, remember, because he bought my gold burst, that perfect gold burst Les Paul Custom. Totally regret selling that thing, but I'm glad it is in a fantastic collection. So he likes signature guitars, just like I do. And he wanted that Dave Grohl signature guitar that I reviewed not too long ago. What did he do here? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Four layers of foam and double boxed. I doubt there's anything that could ever go wrong with this package. But anyways, since he had two of these things, he figured he would just trade one off because he actually got a serial number that he wanted more so than this one. And that guitar, after all that, is... The Adam Jones 1979 VOS. Now, as we learned in my full review and demo of these things, the initial cases, I, I don't know what was wrong with the paint, but they maintained sticky. It didn't cure enough. So you get all this weird stuff. That's like, a, I think, a residue from maybe some of the packing material. But as far as like the actual scuffs on this one, it's not too bad. But this one is supposed to be number 22 out of the run of 179 of the VOSs. Now, the Adam Jones craze has died down a little bit. I mean, not a whole lot, they're still expensive, but you can start to get those age signed ones for about 18,000 now. Even though brand new, they're only supposed to be 10,000, but I mean, that's just the way that the market is. This is just one of those guitars that went absolutely insane in value right away. And it kind of paved the way for the rest of them to just kind of go crazy because Gibson makes these in limited quantities in order to drive up collector demand. So people buy them up and they're not stuck with inventory at stores for a long time. And then it seems like they're kind of just going to do like USA versions of each of these guitars in a roundabout way with the artists. That way, if you happen to have missed out on like the super signature custom shop run, you do have something else coming out because... Uh, I'm not quite sure when we are getting a USA version of this guitar. We had talked about it on a rock or not. Now it's not a custom, it's a standard, like a 50s or 60s standard with just the silver burst on the top. You're not gonna get it on the sides, back, neck, headstock, things like that. And I think those silver burst flying Vs are actually going to be coming out pretty darn soon because Adam just teased them on his Instagram account. So I think that'll probably be next year because usually they're about a year out from whenever the artist gets the prototypes. But who knows, maybe it'll come sooner, like Halloween time. That'd be pretty cool. But that might be when we see the standards get released. I'm not sure. But yeah, if you're interested in this one, sorry, it's actually already spoken for. That's why you always got to check out my website, troglisguitarshow.com. A lot of times that's where I will mainly post my guitars. And if they don't sell within a month, then I'll throw them onto reverb. And what's kind of funny about the owner who's going to be getting this one is he ended up with one of my other review pieces after I sold it to whoever I sold it to. So <laughs> he's had two of them that I've owned, but this time directly. These are nice guitars, but I think the Dave Grohl DG-335 is a cooler guitar because, you know, it's a little bit more unique than a Silver Burst Les Paul Custom. But, you know, they're all great guitars. But now we have a sponsor for today's episode, good old Donner. You can check them out at DonnerDeal.com. There's a bunch of links in the description with various deals, and it will show you the item that we are looking at this week. So it looks like directly in the case, we're actually going to get like a cover for the pedal board as well as the pedal board itself. That's pretty nice. It's a nice navy blue with like a very light blue that's kind of grayish. These are very 90s colors. <laughs> But inside here sleeps our pedal board. It has some nice felt padding to it right away. So if you ever buy a used pedal and it has some Velcro on the bottom, that's because you're supposed to stick them here and then they stay in place. But as far as the construction here, it is made in China. It's like a, a light metal material is what I would describe it as, but the edges are plastic. And it looks like this kit actually comes with all the jumper cables that you'll need for your pedals. That's actually pretty nice. Oh, well, sweet, and they even give you the Velcro for the rest of that to put on your pedals. That's actually a pretty nice little kit, as well as it looks like a strap. So very cool. Thank you, Donner, for sponsoring today's episode. Again, if you're interested in checking out their products, visit DonnerDeal.com. Back to the unboxing. 
And our next one is a guitar that we reviewed a week or two ago, but there was something strangely wrong with it. So I wanted to get another one of these simply because I was confused. Was it supposed to come from the factory at a phase or not? So if you've been watching the show, that kind of gives you a hint of what is in this box. Hey, ooh. That feels way different. Like, it looks completely different. Did they send me the wrong guitar? I guess I'm really glad I picked up a second one of these. This is one of the Chinese-made cases. I think the last one I had was probably Costa Rican. I guess I would have to go back and check that video. But this is another Slim Harpo ES330. So I didn't really love my first one. I mean, it was a good guitar. It wasn't terrible by any means. It just wasn't my favorite favorite. But when we had did the demo, I had found out that my pickups were out of phase. And if you watched long enough into that video, I did flip the magnets in the pickup in order to correct that. So it was just like kind of a, a factory error. And I had a few other people tell me that theirs did not come like that. So it was pretty logical to think that yeah, that was probably just a mistake. But the purist in me wanted to get another one just, just to make sure, just to make sure. So first impressions on this one, I, I would say this is a more vibrant of a finish. I remember last time my red wasn't quite as striking. So there is a little bit of a just a finish difference between example to example. And like this one still has the pickguard film over top of it. As far as QC goes, I don't see too much on the fretboard. Maybe just a little bit of chattering on the binding edges, but honestly, this is one of the cleaner ones I've seen. And whoa, 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 nice. I love this back. Not only does it have like that figuring that I like, but it also has flame figuring in it. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's very mild, but it is there. Oh, that's a nice example. Try to make it so you guys can also see that. Ooh, but let's go ahead and see. Is it actually the way it's supposed to be? <laughs> Okay, so this one just doesn't appear to work at all. Like, did the dealer not check it? After fiddling with this output jack that I think is bad, straight from the factory, unfortunately, <laughs> this one was also out of phase. So is that supposed to be a feature or a spec, or was there just like a limited run of these that accidentally they made the pickups wrong? Because you would think they would advertise that. In the listings for these things, I'm not seeing it in the spec sheets anyways. It's an interesting sound. I don't know enough about Slim Harpo to know if like was his that way, that's why they did it, or is it a factory error? But I don't know if I'm convinced. I think I'll have to buy a third one just, just to make sure that I just haven't gotten two duds in a row. I mean, that output jack is very, very fishy. It looks like we got all our other case candy in here yet, so I guess I'll have to contact the dealer about that. Maybe it just needs a quick contact spray. I'll figure that out. And our last one to unbox today, it's going to be another expensive one. So the story behind this is I was contacted by a musician's friend private reserve guy that I don't normally talk with. My musician's friend rep is a little bit different. So he told me they had serial number four and serial number five available. So I kept that in the back of my head because this was when there were still like four or five of these on the market. I was unsure of how well they were going to sell. But then I had somebody contact me on Reverb about a new Guitar Day program buy on one of these. He wasn't for 100% sure he was going to do it or not, but I figured at the rate that they were selling, I should probably lock it down because if this guy doesn't want it, I'm sure somebody else will want it. And I wanted to be able to do a B-roll shot of a black and white pick guard together since it was an option. So I went ahead and placed the order and I don't know if it was because I didn't place it in time, but looking at the box, I... 
I didn't get serial number four or five, so that kind of made me upset, but what are you going to do? So this is the one that made it possible for me to have a black pickguard and a white pickguard example in those B-roll shots. Now, I will say this one on first impressions here, it's very similar to that other one, but it doesn't have like the big dings in it. I would say I actually prefer example number nine's aging, but they are very very similar guitars but yeah this one's number 24 that adam jones over there was number 22 so we're getting close on serial numbers on those but hey take a look at this beauty i can also see that the aging on the pickups is just a little bit different it's always fun to compare different examples of like highly limited edition guitars because you just don't realize how different each and every single one of these things are until you see them up close because especially on like those tony iomi sgs you, they're billed as exact replicas. They're going to be the exact same as his, but then you see that each and every single one does have a little bit of a difference to it. Okay, hands down, this is better than number nine, though. This has that resonant frequency that I was talking about. Like, a really good Karina V. I mean, every single one is going to be a little bit different, right? But this one... You can feel the vibration in the neck and the body. That's what I was looking for. So don't let that review scare you away from getting one of these. It's just, you know, every single one is going to be a little bit different. Sometimes guitars sound better through different amps. I mean, I have a very traditional clean amp, so maybe that other guitar would have shown more through a different one. But definitely an honor to see two out of the limited edition of 81 of these 58 style flying Vs. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.